Hi. In this video, we're going to go through how to do a hypothesis test for a single mean in Python using a randomization distribution. Um, we're going to continue on with our ERCOT example from the 2021 Texas power crisis. And we're going to focus on wind here. Um, the, the reason why we're focusing on wind is because, well, if you're looking at this visualization that we left off in the last video, you know, it's kind of on, you know, it goes up and down around its forecast peak capacity. Natural gas is consistently below it. So the more questionable case here is, is wind, whether or not, um, whether or not the mean power generation, the curve here, is above or below the, um, the dash line, the forecast peak capacity. Okay, so let's get into how we would execute the code to, to perform this hypothesis test. So recall from last time we <clears throat> we left off with gen piv and it's organized as such. We've got date time as one column, fuel as another, and generation as another here. Um, and what we want to ask ourselves in this hypothesis test is whether the the mean generation from wind was consistently or statistically significantly below the forecasted peak capacity of 6.1 gigawatts. Now we could just calculate the mean of the solid curve and see whether it's above or below this dash curve. But the real question here is how much below it or above it would it need to be to be deemed significantly different than 6.1? If the actual mean was only, say, 6.01, is that statistically significantly below 6.1? If it was 5, is that statistically significantly below it? So that's the real question here is, is how extreme was the actual power generation there? So in order to do a hypothesis test for a single mean using a randomization distribution, we have to compute this shifted X sample. And so we're gonna do that um, before we, right, right before we do our randomization distribution in step two here. The very first thing we need to do is calculate our sample statistic. So since we're focusing on wind, let's pull out our wind sample here from GenPiv, just using a simple filter. So GenPiv.fuel equals wind. <clears throat> so now all of our wind generation values are just going to be in, in, in wind here. Um, actually, this will contain all three columns. And then if we want to just have the generation values, we can say wind. And then from wind, we'll get our generation in gigawatts, okay? And then, so that'll be our, those will be all the wind values. Our sample statistic though is the mean. So we wanna then compute the, the mean of that, okay? Now there's other ways to do this. We could have just done this in one line and filtered and um, only gotten the mean of the generation, but, um, but it doesn't hurt to do it in multiple steps either. So let's see what our, mean wind is, so 5.15 gigawatts. Well, it's certainly less than 6.1. But the question is, well, is that extremely below it? Is it enough below it to say that wind unequivocally failed as a power source during the Texas cold snap? So that's what we're gonna answer with our hypothesis test here. So let's move on to the randomization distribution. We need to import from NumPy. We need to import our NumPy package. And first thing we're gonna do is do this shift. Now the whole point of doing this, calculating the shifted wind speed is to see, well, what would our wind samples have looked like if they were meeting the forecast of peak capacity? In other words, what would the data look like if it were meeting the null condition? If the actual mean was 6.1, what would that look like? Okay, so wind shift is basically the generation that we might have seen had our null condition been met, okay? And it's preserving the, very, the same amount of variability that we actually saw in the, the real data. So how we do this is we take our actual wind sample from the data set, and we're going to shift it. So we're going to add on the amount between our 
no value, so 6.1, so whatever is um, on the right-hand side of the equal sign in our null hypothesis, in this case, 6.1, and we're gonna subtract our wind mean value here. So the difference between the null and the actual mean, we're gonna add that on to our wind samples here, okay? So that's our wind shift. <clears throat> Next, we wanna dictate how many randomizations we wanna do. So capital N equals a thousand. So we'll do a thousand randomization samples and they're all gonna have the same sample size as wind shift. So our little end is gonna be the length of wind shift. Wind shift here is a series, so we can use this length function. So it's gonna have the same sample size as our original data set. That's important. And then we need an object in which to store our randomization sample statistics. So we'll use this MP empty function. Empty is just going to create an empty series in this case. It's going to be of size N. So it's going to basically have a thousand blank spaces here. And as we go through our for loop, let's use J as our index here. As we go through our for loop, we're going to fill in that blank series. So rand mean, the jth place. So we go through our for loop, the jth spot in this empty vector or empty series, we're going to fill with something. And that something is going to be a randomized sample. So we're going to use this random choice function. So NP random choice. Random choice is just going to randomly draw values from whatever we, we provide as the first argument here. So it's going to randomly draw values from wind shift. And we need to tell it how many values to draw. So the size should be equal to n. So it needs to be the same size as the original data set for a randomization distribution to hold true. And we need to do this with replacement. That is, we draw one value out of wind shift, and then we put it back. And that same value can be drawn again. So we replace the value. Now, this will this alone will create a new sample of size n, but we want the statistic of that. So on this, we can calculate our mean. So we'll have our new sample, and then we'll calculate the mean from it. So we just have one value, and we'll store it in that single blank spot dictated by this j value here. So we'll put it in the j spot of this empty random mean object here, OK? And so that's our randomization distribution. And go ahead and run that. We want to inspect this. Let's visualize it. So we'll take our ran mean, convert it to a data frame so we can visualize it in ggplot. Take our ran mean series. And we'll just give it a column name of means here. So then in ggplot, We can take a look at this as, say, for example, a histogram, histogram. And for the histogram, we just need to supply, tell it what, what to use for x values, in this case, the means. So we can take a look at that. So here's our histogram of the randomization statistics here. So this is our randomization distribution, all the different, the thousand different mean values from scrambling up wind shift. In other words, this is the sort of variability that we'd expect to see in the sample statistic if the null hypothesis were true. So if, um, if that forecast peak capacity was actually being met to a statistically significant degree, we'd expect our mean values to fluctuate in, in this range here, okay? That's great. Let's see how this compares to what we actually have. So where does our 5.15 lie within this? And here we can visualize this with a vertical line. And so our x-intercept is gonna be the mean. This is our 
sample statistic. Let's give it a color, red, and let's make it dashed. There we go. So this is our actual sample statistic. So this is the mean of our actual data. And we can see that it's well below the randomization distribution. What does this mean? It means that what we saw in reality is extremely different from what we should have seen if the null hypothesis were true. So we can also um, state the same result as a p-value or the probability of, of observing a value at least as extreme as this, given the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. Here we see that there's very little, if no chance of seeing any part of the randomization distribution below this dash line. So let's write this out. We would then encounter, calculate our p-value here. I'll put it in a couch it in a print statement, although we could store it as a, as a value if we wanted to. So our p-value equals, our p-value is going to be the number of our randomization distribution values that are at least as extreme as our dashed line. So we can write that as a length of the rand mean values that meet some criteria. And that criteria is rand mean being less than or equal to our sample statistic, win mean. And so that'll be the number of the samples um, that are that are less than, at least as extreme as one mean. We want the proportion, so we'll divide this by the big N. So there's a thousand values in here. Divide it by that. Now the reason why we do less than is because that's the same as our alternative hypothesis. So here our alternative is the mean is less than 6.1. So we need to make that agree down here when we're calculating the p-value, it has to be less than. The reason why we include the equals to is because the definition of p-value is that the probability observe, of observing a value at least as extreme. So at least, so at least would include the, the equal sign. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And we see that our p-value is zero, that there is zero chance of, um, any element of our randomization distribution falling below our actual sample statistic. So in other words, our <clears throat> the data do not support the conclusion that the forecast speed capacity was met. So we can write this as a concluding statement. Always good to, in the concluding statement, say what the, no, the, what the p-value is. So we can say our p-value is 0, 0, if we want to be a little bit more precise about it, um, because none of the randomization distribution falls below the sample statistic mean win. Right? Um, so, um, so therefore, we can reject the null hypothesis. And we can say with the null hypothesis, we can reject the null hypo hypothesis that the forecasted peak capacity was met. But the key language here is that we reject the null hypothesis. When we put that in bold, um, and the reason why we can do that is because our p-value of zero is, well, it's less than 0.05. We can make that clear. We can say p-value is less than 0.05. And we can, um, it's always nice to then put this into the context of the problem. We can say the average, sorry, the average wind power generated during the Texas cold snap was statistically significantly less than the forecasted peak 
capacity. So here we have statistic proof that that wind also failed, that wind didn't meet the, meet the criteria here. And I say also failed because, well, if the data for wind certainly failed on null hypothesis, then most certainly that for natural gas would also fail since it is considerably below its forecasted peak capacity here. Okay. All right. So that concludes our test for a single mean.